use MATLAB to generate the shear and bending moment diagrams for this beam. We're going to actually divide this into steps that I'm going to take on paper and steps that I'm going to take in MATLAB. You cannot work an engineering problem entirely in a computer without paper or some computerized paper. There, there just is no way to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a free body diagram. On my free body diagram, I will have AY and AX for my pin. I will have BY for my roller. There's 3 meters in between one and the other, and 1.2 meters in between BY and the end of the load, and the end of the beam. I will have some distributed load, the equivalent point load for which I'm going to call this load, and it's going to act at some distance X. Once I do this, I can go to MATLAB for bits and pieces of this. For example, I'm going to define a constant, W equals 2.5. And I can even, if I want to, put in a little percent sign to make a comment and say this is in units of kilonewtons per meter. All of the comments that you make are entirely up to you. I'm going to define a variable called dist load. And by my engineering, which I've done on paper, I can say that the distributed load equivalent magnitude is W times 3 plus 1.2. That's my distributed load equivalent point value. And it's going to act in the middle of the load, which is going to be at 3 plus 1.2 divided by 2. So that's what I have it, that's where it acts. These are now variables that exist inside of MATLAB. The next thing I'm going to do on paper is I'm going to write equations of equilibrium. Again, you can do this in MATLAB, but you open yourself up for all kinds of potential errors if you're not careful with it. So the sum of the forces in X says that AX is 0. Sum of the forces in Y says AY plus BY is equal to the distributed load. And if I take the moments at A, I've got the distributed load times where it acts, whatever that is, has to be equal to BY times 3. Now again, in MATLAB I can say BY, if I solve the sum of the moments, is going to be the distributed load times where it acts, divided by 3. I'm using semicolons just because I don't want MATLAB to spit back numbers at me all the time. AY is equal to the distributed load minus BY. If you want to see these numbers, you can leave off the semicolons, and it'll tell you exactly what the numbers are. Now, go back to the paper. Write out what your V and M are going to be from the definitions. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define what my intervals are. So the first interval I'm going to have is going to be between 0 and 3, and the second one will be between 3 and 4.2. I'm going to define those vectors, a vector of those x variable values in MATLAB. I'm going to start it as a vector, which means I'm going to enclose it in square brackets. The first number says where I'm going to start, that would be 0. The last number is where I'm finishing, and I'm going to separate it by two colons and whatever I want my step size to be. So in this case, I'm going to use a step size of 0.1. You can make a smaller step size if you want. It just gives you a longer x vector. By definition, v is equal to negative integral w of x dx plus ay. So if I pl plug in some numbers on paper, I have negative 2.5x plus ay. I can plug that in Vista, too, uh, in MATLAB. I want to define w, uh, v1 is going to be minus w times x1 plus ay. And I can type this in almost exactly like I would write it down, noting that I'm using an uh, asterisk for multiply. If you want to put in some extra spaces to make your columns look neater or something to clarify your code, that's fine too. Now my moment on this first integral is the positive integral of v of x dx plus whatever moment I had at the beginning. I don't have a moment at the beginning, so all I'm going to get is minus 2.5x squared over 2 plus a y of x. So on my first interval, I'm going to code m1 equals minus w times x1 squared divided by 2. When you square something in MATLAB that's a vector, and I, what I want to do is I'm squaring each particular term, I have to use a period in front of the caret to say x1 squared. Then I can say plus a1 ay times x1. On my next interval, between 3 and 4.2, I need a different x vector. 
Now my x vector is going to go from 3 by steps of 0.1 to the value of 3 plus 1.2. That's my new x vector. That tells me that I'm working on my second interval. Now v is equal to the integral from 3 to x of minus w of x dx plus v at x equals 3 from above. So if I work that out, I have v goes, the v of 3 goes from 0 to 3 of minus w of x dx plus ay. That would be v of 3. Now I want to say plus by plus the integral from 3 to x of minus w of x dx. Now if I combine the two integrals from 0 to 3 and from 3 to x, I can write v is the integral from 0 to x of minus w of x dx plus ay plus by. And if you look at these two v's, what you can see is the difference between the v in the first interval and the v in the second interval is just that I've raised it up by by because I've come to the roller here at the top and I've raised my v diagram up by by. So you just simplify that out a bit, you get minus 2.5 times x plus ay plus by. And you can plug that into MATLAB. v2 is equal to minus w times x2 plus ay plus by. m is equal to m of 3, wherever I started, plus the integral from 3 to x of v of x dx. Now, that gives me minus 2.5 times 3 squared over 2 plus ay of 3 plus the integral from 3 to x of minus 2.5x plus ay plus by dx. Now you can simplify this out considerably. In fact, what you end up with is the integral from 0 to x of minus 2.5x plus ay dx, which is what I had before, plus the integral of 3 to x from 3 to x of by dx. So if I go back to what I had before, I have minus 2.5x squared over 2 plus ay of x plus by times x minus 3, because this integral no longer goes from 0. So if I go into MATLAB, I'm going to say m2 is equal to minus w times x2, and again I'm going to use a dot, a period ampersand, uh, period caret 2 divided by 2 to give me a square for each of my individual terms. Now, in my quote MATLAB window here in my right hand column, I've run out of space. Sometimes you run out of space in your coding in MATLAB too. You can put three an ampersand uh, ellipsis here, the three periods in a row, to say this command continues on the next line. And then I can say ay times x2 plus, and I'm going to again, I'm going to put in an ellipsis the three periods to say I'm continuing to the next line, by times x2 minus 3. Now I have defined my x values, I've defined my v values, and my m values. I'm actually going to take my two individual vectors, x1 and x2, and I'm going to stack them together. I'm going to append one to the other so that I now have a vector that goes all the way out the length of my beam. I'm going to do the same thing with my v's and my m's. Now I have a single v vector that is the shear, internal shear all the way along the beam and the internal moment all the way along the beam. And I can come and say figure 1 plot x versus v. Figure 2 plot x versus m, where these are commas, plot x comma v and plot x comma m. That will give you the graphs that you're looking for. Now, you're also going to want to come back and clean things up a little bit. Use x label and then a parenthesis and a single apostrophe to give it a label like x in meters, apostrophe, parentheses, and y label, again, parentheses, apostrophe, for example, v in kilonewtons, or m in kilonewton meters for your moment diagram. And then the other one you're going to want to use is title. Give it a title. Parentheses, apostrophe, shear diagram, or equivalently, moment diagram, apostrophe, parentheses. That will let you know how to use MATLAB to generate these shear and bending moment diagrams.